Okay, let's resume, please. Uh, Ms. Arosa, I remind you again that I remind you that the testimony you're about to give will continue under the oath you took earlier to tell the truth. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sinkin. Thank you, uh, Ms. LaRose. I think one of the major themes of this entire proceeding is this division between two worlds that we're dealing with here. Yes. Um, we're sort of walking between two worlds. Yes. And trying to live in both and make sense out of both. Mm -hmm. uh, you've used the term spiritual psychology. Mm -hmm. So there's a Western science and spiritual science. I, I use the term spiritual science sometimes. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how you view spiritual psychology? There's several um, names for the... It's not really a new field, it's ancient. And even uh, Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology, talked about this. It's called transpersonal psychology also, that we have our, our five senses, and then we have dreams. And we have prophetic dreams in all cultures that have led all the major religions, prof prophets. That's really where it starts, way back to pay attention to the inner, the inner knowing, to dreams, to visions, just to hunch, you know, different things like that. Okay. But that's, that's the origins of spiritual psychology Thank to you. me. This is just my definition. I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> and when you were drawn to Hawaii, were you told what your purpose in coming here would be? Yes. I... I never wanted to come to leave. I never wanted to leave Oregon. And uh, the per, your, your specific question, um, I had asked myself. And I put out, send out a prayer, and I fell asleep for five minutes and had this dream, which was fulfilled on the top of the mountain when I was led to that pohaku that had that message. And that was that I was to stay in Oregon to be healed. I had a very serious, several serious things wrong with me, illnesses. But I could not stay in Oregon. And this is like a, just a, a voice came down from the sky in this dream, but it was very vivid and said, you're moving to that mountain in Hawaii <laughs> with snow on it. And the dream ended. Uh -huh. And then I woke up and I said, uh, thank you. A great spirit, but number one, I'm never leaving Oregon. Number two, there's no snow in Hawaii. You should know that. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know about no, you know, immense mountain in Hawaii. And then, and I, I was, I'm sorry, I saw I was on top of the world. That's what I saw. Uh -huh. I was standing on top of the world. And I was in utter peace. And I had come home. And I said, this is not a correct answer, creator. <laughs> And then I, w then that's what happened to my me. I w completely recalled and felt that whole dream when I was standing. I didn't know it was the highest mountain on the world from the base to the top. Well, welcome home. Thank you. Um, you talk about when you were in prayer on Mauna Kea, you felt the heavy, oppressive weight of the observatories. Mm -hmm. and the blockage they created regarding the energy flows around and above Mauna Kea. I'm wondering if your spiritual work has included working with those energy flows, understanding why they are the way they are and what their purpose is. No, I have not, except that, again, I don't ask questions that are not prompted to, to me to ask, either in prayer or by, mostly it's Hawaiian cultural practitioners. So there's a definite purpose and in prayer. And then it's very clear the answers come. It's not just to be curious. Right. Yeah. I just know that I saw the flows and I felt them and I felt this oppression. What I, so I, in, in, my, in my world, I have very definite um, 
ways of seeing, feeling, and improving, I question myself. That's a good researcher, right? Mm. So I never went beyond what I saw and felt because I was not, there was no question other than that. But it, there was, of course, those telescopes are a major impact on this mountain, just the presence of them, whether or not you're for or against them. It's a physical alteration that is huge. Yeah, I think I think we have that confirmed in the yeah. in the environmental impact statement and other documents. Yeah. Yes, um, and you talked about the direct transmission of star knowledge and how mm -hmm. that has taken place on Mauna Kea in the past. Mm -hmm. um, well, two things about that. One is there a risk of losing that connection or having that connection blocked if a thirty meter telescope is built up there? Well, what I what I <laughs> saw when I was pulled to go to that one pohaku that was, and I, I understand what I'm saying is very, might be way out there for some people and it might be already known by many. So I, I have to tell the truth here. Is that when I was sitting, I was drawn to that one, I sat next to it, put my arm around it, and there was a Hawaiian guardian in there a spirit, a soul. He said he was a soul. He had been Hawaiian, stayed, and was a guardian of that site because it was necessary. A lot of this is survival knowledge for humans to survive. So, yes, I saw that. I mean, I felt that. And then... Um, I, he said, look around right where you are. And I'm looking around, and here is in a semicircle, and he's facing, he's, he's, the stone is sitting there. He said, what do you see? And then I just, I saw there were stones evenly placed around in a semicircle that were for, si for sitting on. Right, and I don't mean to be rude, but I'm no, going to go stop ahead. you on that path. Yeah to come to my question, which is, would the building of the 30-meter telescope in any yes. way block access to the kind of information that was available through those stones? It would actually bulldoze them over. I see. It was that, that was right there. They're on the site. Yes. It would destroy that. Um, let me go to some other t testimony that was earlier in this proceeding. We had some folks who had gone up to the mountain and one of them immediately recognized an observatory spot where he laid down on the ground and was able to visually connect with the stars and he saw exactly what all those stones were and why they were there. And this was also on the 30 meter telescope site. I'm wondering if that is a similar experience to yours or mm -hmm. it's a, a different experience that you had. It's, it's different. different, yeah. Okay. I mean, it would be similar, but, but yeah, different. But it's yeah. a different time and place. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, I handed you a document earlier, and it's uh, page four of the Bulletin 38 that we've been talking about here today. It's Exhibit B01P, uh, if I've got that correct. Or no, I guess this page had its own. This is B. I'm sorry. The, what you handed me. It was B08J. <laughs> you have that in front of you? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I want to direct your attention to that page. It discusses ethnography, ethnohistory, and ethnocentricism. I want to focus on the, the elements of ethnocentricism. Um, you talked about your expression might be viewed by others as far out, mm -hmm. uh, or lack credibility, or whatever. Um, and I think this passage addresses the importance of applying the standards of the 
historical district, actually, to your kind of testimony. Mm -hmm. So um, in the second column of that um, page, coming down a few lines, I want to just read a little part of it here. Similarly, such a group's belief that its ancestors emerged from the earth at a specific location at the beginning of time may contradict European-American science's belief that the group's ancestors migrated to North America from Siberia. These facts in no way diminish the significance of the locations in question in the eyes of those who value them. Were you here earlier when we were discussing emic and etic? No, I was not. You were not. Okay. Um, part of that discussion was about how if you really want to know what a sacred site means, you ask the people who use it as a sacred site, not an archaeologist that wanders by and sees something mm -hmm. and might have an opinion. So I'm seeing this as a similar, the, the experience of the people who are experiencing it is what is real to them, and we are not allowed legally to discount that as somehow inferior or less than the experience of other people's value systems or spiritual experiences or science that might reject that earlier expression of spirit. So I'm assuming that in your work, you must run into this division all the time between those who understand, participate in, and believe in spiritual matters and those who simply do not. And I'm wondering if, if part of your work is to try and build bridges between those, and if so, how do you do it? Well, I can answer that simply is there's, there's people that have no experiences, right? Um, other, uh, I mean, many that don't, like such as, I'll give you an example of that. So this is very frequent here on this island and others that I've been on. There'll be a realtor, you know, that wants to sell a place and they can't sell it because the inhabitants there have, keep leaving or, you know, the, the construction people or many different people that may not have any, any um, what you would call beliefs, but they have experiences and that are disturbing or that knock them down. This is real stories I'm referring to. And I work with a lot of realtors. They say, how can, how can I sell this place when the construction workers are left? That person got hurt. Um, their kids are having nightmares. There's winds going through the house, and there's no on and on and on. It's, these are common stories. This is not unknown, to, especially to realtors. They might not believe it. I don't have, I say, I like to write, I don't have beliefs. I have experiences that I know, right? Right? And so that's an example. They don't have to believe it. It's happening. <laughs> right. right, okay. Um, I think one last question. Have, have you tuned into the project itself, the 30-meter telescope, and, and received any impression of the telescope itself, its purpose, or its mission or why it's here? Well, the only... That's a really good question, and I'll do that f um, further since I've been asked. <laughs> but when I tuned in, it was... It, what I heard, it was going to be... It was obsolete. obsolete. By the time it was finished, if it ever did, it would be obsolete. But the other... If you wanted the, the truth... The other part is when I tuned into the, the telescope many times and very loud, loudly, actually, I heard there is no telescope and it will not be built and it might go to a certain point even if it was started and there is a universal natural law of a tipping point, which I never heard that word before and now I find out that is true. And if it, and it, there was a tipping point, then the mountain would shake. Mm. And many people, mm. Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian, mm. who can see and feel and dream, have seen that mm. and heard it. Okay. Thank you very much.
You're welcome. Mr. Keneally. Aloha, Rose. Aloha. You know, thank you for um, taking your time out to, to become a witness. It's my pleasure. You know, earth witnesses and, you know, earth keepers are really rare. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you know that this is not the first time the living God has cleansed herself? Yes, I do know that. Have you received any messages on the prophecy of the house of God that will be built on the tallest mountain in the world? And uh, countries will come and look um, there. And after that, they go home to their countries and beat their weapons to plowshares and peace shall reign for a thousand years. Have I received any messages about that prophecy? Mm -hmm. Not, not as you're specifically referring to that, but that there, there is Cree prophecy and there is Hawaiian prophecy. You can correct me, anybody here, that, that if I'm wrong. There's Lakota and there is, well, many, many different, because I'm connected to the 13 international grandmothers and they have seen they have heard and seen this prophecy in many con countries. That is, that at this time on earth, when humans have imbalanced and harmed the planet, there would be a time of the rainbow peoples, all colors of skin, and eyes, and hair, the rainbow prophecy that we would all come together, who wants peace will have peace in all different cultures and beliefs, who wants to heal the earth to survive, <laughs> and they would come together as one people. And that also, and I really can't speak because I know there's a big prophecy, the Hawaiian cultural practitioners do know this, but I know that was one of the elders had that vision and said we have to welcome people from other places that are true earth keepers that are true in aloha live aloha and welcome them here to this island to this mountain and i've met indians and elders like the Kero indians come here many elders because they know it is mauna wawakea That's a similar truth. Do you know that the living God has held the island of Hawaii and Pele later on in the bosom of her protection as she did three times before when the earth cleansed itself? No, I have not heard that. Have you done any other ceremonies on Mauna Kea? I have gone to ceremonies on Mauna Kea for about eight, eight years with Hawaiian cultural practitioners. Oh. Do you have a definition of aloha? I have. Just a second here. The legal definition of aloha, which is in by 1986, the ideal of aloha had reached state legislation. Serious-minded government officials met to put aloha into legal language that was inserted into the Hawaii Revised Statutes. Here is the official numbered entry. I can't read it. Well, 5-7.5, Aloha Spirit. Aloha spirit is a coordination of mind and heart within each person. And I'm going to jump to the end where it is pertinent to your question. 
Aloha is the essence of relationships in which each person is important to every other person for collective existence. Aloha means to hear what is not said, to see what cannot be seen, and to know the unknowable. Quote. Again, uh, thank you for your time and uh, being here and hope to see you around. Aloha. Mahalo. Mr. Vicente. Mrs. Freitas. Aloha. 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 This pohaku you talk about on Mauna Kea, by a trained archaeologist, wouldn't this archaeologist see that pohaku and and um, put them like a historical site or um, what do they call that? A new site? Do you, do you have knowledge of that? I don't know um, any archaeologist that I don't know those reports or studies, but I know that we walked by that many times. There's nothing unusual, nothing. So I don't know. I'm not an archaeologist, but it was, no, it just blended in with a thousand other stones. Um, by building this TMT, if it should ever happen, wouldn't it cause a substantial adverse impact to the existing natural resources within the surrounding area which you talk about in, by this pohaku it would it would be bulldozed is my understanding because it's right there in that five acres it would be destroyed so this pohaku wouldn't it also cause a detrimental impact to the people that knows of this Pohaku there. Yes, Excuse me. definitely. <coughs> Mrs. Freitas, why would this witness be qualified to answer that? I just asked for her opinion if she can answer that. But that's, it's her opinion related to other people. Okay. Right, so In your she opinion, can speak for herself. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want me to rephrase that? I think so. Okay. In your opinion, this Pohaku, but it caused you detrimental impact on that pohaku. Mm -hmm. If it was destroyed, it would cause me great sorrow because I know there is a lot of knowledge there waiting. I, I understand what you're saying because I too had certain things and that's why I'm here today, to help. No matter what it takes, I can run broke, whatever, I'm here. So, oh, sorry. So you had other vision insights besides that area, around that area as well? Yes. And in that other area, in your opinion, would it also cause an impact, adverse impact to the natural resources there. To the natural cultural resources? Yes. It already has. Yes. And also it will be detrimental to you if it should ever be built or anything around that area, in other areas of that area. Yes, it will. Thank you, no more questions. Thank you, Mrs. Freitas. Is Mr. Freitas still here or? Oh, he left. Okay. Mr. Monod? Mr. Ng? Just to clarify, um, you're not from here, is that correct? 
I am not from here, that's correct. And you're not native Hawaiian? I am not native Hawaiian. And you're not native to Hawaii? No. Uh, referring to your written direct testimony, are these your spiritual opinions or feelings or visions? Regarding to what? Regarding what, specifically? Re regarding your written direct testimony. There's, mu there's many things I'm referring to, to what exact vision or whatever are you referring to in my testimony? Well, is the written direct testimony your testimony? Oh, yes, yes. And I didn't understand. And does it express your feelings? Yes. And does it express your visions? Yes. Are you offended if I t say to you that your whole testimony is rather far-fetched and speculative? No, I'm not. A what is your objection? I'm going to overrule. Please answer. So I w I'm not objective because I'm not, I don't object to this question because I question myself. Thank you. I have no further questions. And I, you're not, uh, excuse, me. excuse me, you haven't excuse listened me, to my answer. The, he's done. You've answered. You did not let me to an he fit, you, you, you didn't let me finish my, my sentence. I would like to finish my sentence. Go ahead. I am, didn't object to you answering that, saying that, because I ask myself the same things. That's what I And I said. have not, of over a 95% accuracy rate, but not only confirmed what is there and what was there, and by psychologists, by doctors, by other people and other experiences. So proof is what I go on. Proof. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Case, any redirect? I'm just going to redirect on um, one of the last statements about uh, you not being native Hawaiian, native to this place, native to Hawaii. In your expertise and your experience, do you have to be native Hawaiian to receive a message for a native Hawaiian? No, in my experience, that other people, no matter what culture or race or how that have come here, they have these experiences just like the 80-year-old elder did 40 years ago when Mo'oinanea Mo came to her. And she was, right. she was very accurate. Was she Hawaiian? No. Thank you. Thank you, you're excused. We had on schedule today the um, party witness, his um, ward. Are you, I mean, it, we don't have very much time. Are you prepared to pass or at least until, the, I guess we can reschedule? I'm sorry? It is 425. I'd actually prefer to start a fresh day on Monday, if that's okay. Are you going to be here on Monday? Oh, yeah. Um, yes. We did have a death in the family, and oh. um, the service is on Saturday, and we decided we would forego going. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. <coughs> um, Ms. Ward, um, um, the last time we were here, Mr. Kayama made a representation on behalf of Mr. Ferguson. I have no way to confirm it. He's not here. Mr. Ferguson is not feeling very well. He's in Honolulu, and we don't really know his status right now. So we're prepared to continue. If Mr. Ferguson and his witnesses are not here on Monday, we're prepared, pre prepared to continue with the Hui witnesses. I just wanted to say that I have had an opportunity to text Hank, and he is planning on being here. Um, and I asked him to inform me if anything changes, because it will affect us. So. 
I think he knows. And he was he's not he wasn't feeling well, but he's he's coming back home. So anyway, he um, it it it, impact, it impacts everybody. Yes, that's why I keep asking. Yes, and we don't have any dates for February at this time. I know if if there is and a so problem, I need oh. to find out a little bit better what's happening for next week so okay. that and you know it's really not appropriate to it's not I'm not scolding you I'm just saying yeah I'm, I actually can't really I just wanted to convey this yeah and I, I get that. that and I think um, as far as I understand Deb we're we're prepared to move it in case otherwise we just continue is that how we're doing it yeah. uh, your honor we did file um, our lineup on January 17th. Um, Mr. Uh, Fergustrom was to, he has two witnesses, one of whom is Williamson Chang and the other is Mike Lee, but I haven't seen him do a designation necessarily and himself. And himself. However, we put in on ours for January 23rd in case something went awry. Um, <clears throat> Kalani Flores, we can keep going with um, Deborah. And, um, and I, you know, I will, we understand that in the breach, uh, our um, on island um, Hui petitioners are going to fill that breach. And it is of concern because we had, a, we would have preferred just to go straight through on our own. I understand that. But I it was, had it, nothing to do with that. I know, and it was kind of like it was so important, you know, for well, timing or schedule. It, it really it, it was. I haven't given any permission for that. It, it just, I don't know what happened, but Mr. Kayama made the representations, and I, I'm concerned because. It looked like Mr. Fergustrom's entire case was going to be presented on Monday. Exactly. And so I don't, we are, we are now all, the university is. Well, we've given our lineup all the way through to January 30th, including uh, designation of exhibits. Yes. So we'll just keep, I mean, it's not that they're going to, we're going to present anyone that no one knows about. Well, that I, wasn't, I understand. I can't control, you know, in the interest of trying to be cooperative, we ag agreed to this with Mr. Fergustrom. I know, of, but yeah. nobody else was talked to or consulted or nothing. And that's really not appropriate because there are other people here who have to set up their witnesses. After, after you folks are done, they're going to go really quickly in order, so I have to give them an idea of when to get their, uh, you know, out of town witnesses, especially well, ready I, to go. Yes. So I, I, my, my issue with our schedule is we have a rebuttal witness for January 30th. So it was my intention to ask your honor today if you, when you want us to have a rebuttal witness, because we'll take Mr. Cruz off. I am expecting that we will run out. We will be done. If Mr. I, I yes. already indicated that I would take up the request for rebuttal witnesses after all the witnesses are done, which is the appropriate time. Okay, so we can remove Mr. Cruz from our January 30th list. So for the other people who are still here, um, I just don't know what to say about Hank. I don't think I there's he's coming with a guy. Okay. I'll, okay. Yeah, Mr. Minot. Yes. Your Honor, I just want to state for the record that uh, Mr. Fergustrom was attending the land use conference today in Honolulu that the HSBA put on. Members of our firm were there and saw him there with laptop working away. As far as we know, 
uh, I don't think there's a problem. I mean, we understand that Hank... Yes, there's a problem. What, what, I'm not sure what it is. Well, I allowed Kahea and the pro se persons who are represented by Mr. Worderman previously mm -hmm. to collaborate in putting their witnesses forward. That was sort of an unusual thing to do, but I thought it would be... It was, there was a request to do it. I thought it would also be efficient and in everyone's best interests. Um, Mr. Fergustrom isn't here, so I can't even confirm with him right now that he'll be ready to go on Monday. First of all, number two, we never uh, we never gave him permission for that, but someone else may have. He's not part of your group, no. so it's this is it's not okay. To, it's not fair to everybody else. So that that's where I'm having to deal with it. But it's not your issue, and I. Unless you want to make an issue of it, I no. don't think it's a good idea. It's my Ms. Ms. Ward? Um, Judge Romano, I, I don't think any of, a, any of us are trying to make an issue of it. The thing is, my recollection, and I may be wrong, but my recollection is that um, you had made some assumptions based on the fact that we were going to try and do four a day, that the 23rd would be the day that Hank should I put his not, witnesses on. I did not, Ms. Ward. On. We dealt with this last week, Thursday. You said that to me, and I said no. Okay. You folks were estimating when you might be finished or ready to go, mm -hmm. and so we thought maybe the 23rd or 24th was when Mr. Fergustrom would be ready to go. That's all I said to him. We weren't sure because you mm -hmm. weren't sure. Mm -hmm. And it's, I can't force you folks to, right. you well, know, do things if you, you can't, you're not ready. Right. So, but, but I can urge you to be ready because it affects everybody else. I and I said to Mr. Fergustrom, he's the next person in line. Right. So he's the most affected. And I don't know what happened after that. Okay. So in any event, let me think on it while you folks are all making your record. Anyone else? Mrs. Freitas? Aloha. Um, I wanted to know if I can be taken out of order because one of my witnesses had to fly out today on an emergency and she won't be back to the 29th. But if if um, continues how it is, then I'll be put back in order <laughs> if can. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, here's what I'm going to do. Let me hear from everyone else first. Okay. And then I'm going to give you a date certain when your witness can come. Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you. So, Mrs. Case? I have a couple of things. Sure. Um, just a couple of questions. And I, I certainly do not want to keep on going with the Hank Ferguson conversation myself. However, we all were here that day, and I believe that Hank came up here and he said 23rd, and, and we were right here, and it just kind of went. It and I, you know, and what I mean, it, it, but we are not the ones, I don't believe, that said, we made, I don't think we made that decision. I think, I, I'm not sure how that happened. If it's not on the record, it didn't come from me. Everything I have said is here right. in this room. And, and maybe record. we all have to review that record. But. So here's what happened. After I said that to him, a couple days after, maybe the next day, he was very insistent because he said he had to buy a ticket for a witness. Right. Yes. That would be Professor Chang. Yes. So I said I understood and that we would deal with that. And the next thing I knew, he was putting all his witnesses on, his entire case in chief. I had nothing to do with that. I didn't know anything until it was represented here last week. So I we, really don't I, think you folks should get involved. I don't, if you don't know anything more factually, I don't want to hear anything else. I, I, I do, we did stipulate, we, we were asked if we would mind if he went in the middle and we said we were fine with it. So that's Yes, all but I you're not the only parties in the case. We have everyone else. But that's I my mean, point. I know, but we did agree to that and well I, that's I, I fine Ms. Pichota, but I don't think you'd be very happy if the university and TIO made agreements about things without you folks it's not okay well period I don't I don't recall hearing anyone object I mean did they because it, we, we Ms. Pichota, I'm not going to argue we with you about this I hear what you're saying I know you made a stipulation it was represented to me last week I said last week what about everybody else right. So it's, you know, we're repeating ourselves here. Okay. It's, 
it's really not a good situation. Okay, then I'm going to go to the two questions that I have regarding admitting exhibits and written direct testimony. So my first question, when will you make determinations about admitting exhibits and written direct testimony into evidence? At the close of all the evidence. And what will be the procedure for objecting to specific? I'm going to set up a process so that everything is done in writing, and then there will be a period to object. And then we will have, a, we will convene, and then we will. I will decide. Okay. Thank you. All right. I just want to put a final note on on that issue. So that means we don't need to worry about responding to the motion that was made to admit exhibits now. No. Okay. Yeah, I, we, from the from the first day when I tried it. to accept all the exhibits, and then there was a fuss, I just said, "Okay, fine, we won't, yeah. and we're just going to go to the end, and I'll deal with it then." But pra I'm going to be practical. If you have referred to it, if there's a witness who testified, I think I have to receive it. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Yeah. Uh, just one clarifying point, because I see on some people's exhibit lists testimony of people who never appeared. True. So if those, they don't appear, they're not, I'm then not, they're out. I will not be receiving that. Right. Because okay. everyone will not have had a chance to cross-examine. Right. It's okay. the whole issue is the issue of fairness. I understand. Everyone has to be able to look at each piece and that's what we intend to give. Right. Thank you. All right. Hang on a second. Give me a moment to just think. Ms. Ward? Um, I have a question on an entirely unrelated subject, so perhaps if you'd like to think about this first. That's you know, I want to make a decision about it. The order of witnesses that was represented to us last week for Monday is Michael Lee, Williamson Chang, Mr. Fergusham, and if time permitted, E. Kalani Florence. I'm going to accept that, but I will not accept any further stipulations on presentation of witnesses. It needs to be fair. It's not fair doing it that way. And I'm only conceding because I, I believe Mr. Fergusham may have purchased a ticket for Professor Chang. I don't know about Michael Lee, and if, his, if he does not have any written direct testimony, he will not be allowed to testify. That's been the case from the get-go. That's not going to change. What, Mr. Ching? <coughs> yeah, I, I'm hearing, like, stipulation. Who's the stipulation between? You folks made a stipulation with Mr. Fergustrup. Okay, if my memory is correct, he approached you for putting his two witnesses on at that on he that did date. not. Well, it's my memory. And that's exactly. I'm old. I don't remember everything. And anyway, because I think, or I'm, I remember, or I think I remember, that he made a deal with you. He, he, I believe, I believe, represented he bought two sets of tickets for his two witnesses, and that I'm thinking now that if Mr. Ferguson shows up or not, his witnesses will probably show up if they're those kinds of witnesses. He doesn't show up on Monday. We're not putting on his witnesses. That makes no sense. So if he shows up on Monday, I'm going to accept this, this representation that was made to all of us last week. I'm relying on it. Um, Ms. Aluli, would you happen to know if there is a written direct testimony of Michael Lee? I can look it up. I oh, it's okay. Yeah. Mr. Manat, would you happen to know? Okay. What about you, Mr. Shinyama? Do you know? Okay. Well, I'm just saying, everyone who has testified, every single witness, and we've had 30, has written direct testimony. So if there's no written direct testimony, it's not going to happen. And I'm sorry that Mr. Hergersham is not here to hear it, 
but I guess he made other choices. So I'll accept his presentation of witnesses. My expectation is that's his case in chief. That's all he's got. There's no other witnesses in his witness list. So my expectation is when he's done, he will rest. And if he is not prepared to go or they are not going to be here, then I accept your offer, Ms. Aluli, to put witnesses on on behalf of Kahia or the other pro se parties. And we'll have Kalani. And um, well, we're going to have to adjust it. But well, Kalani is already identified. Wait, we, you know, our court reporter can't okay. hear you. Uh, before so before we go on, can we introduce Diana? From oh, I'm, the, very sorry, yeah. I'm very sorry, Ms. Lewis. I'm very sorry. I apologize. I didn't. Yes, you do. And we're pretty locked in for January 24th because, because we have uh, Ms. Kaoli flying in from Honolulu. So, but the other rest of the witnesses on that day are all from Honolulu, are from Hilo. So that would be Ku Ching, and who is this toward the third and fourth? Uh, Ruth, the last name I cannot pronounce, and Kuulei Kanahele. She is also, because she teaches, pretty locked in to January 24. But I will, so I would like to accommodate the Smiley and Kule on the 24th because. Um, yes, yeah, we've accommodated we every witness upon request. Right. Thank you. So Thank you. I fully intend to do that as well. But and, and similarly for uh, Peter Mills on the 25th, because he also teaches at the university. So, um, so it looks like uh, your Kahia and the pro se witness, the pro se parties, other pro se parties, they will end their case on the thirtieth. Am I right? I'm taking Brian Cruz off. Wait, yes. Wait, Claire, wait, you, wait. Can you hold on? Can we should have her before we talk. Well, she just told us that we can't call a rebuttal until everybody's closed. Yeah, I was not aware that he was a rebuttal witness at the time his name was mentioned. We have identified him as rebuttal. Yes, um, I like understand. Like Daviana, and, and he has been identified as a rebuttal witness. So okay, wait, this, it's a little unwieldy, so we're going to need to... Um, I, I think we're good for Monday. I've made my decision. If he's here, he can put it on. If he's not here, you'll go forward. We're set for Tuesday. We have the witnesses uh, via your filing, and uh, that's what we'll do next week. But going. having said that, I, I do need to have an estimated time when you folks will rest your case because the other people are waiting, and I have to arrange for dates. I would say, Your Honor, um, they want to discuss Brian Cruz so we can talk about him, but we've been in touch with him all throughout and just submitted his WDT, and he is a Kahea witness, but we will, con, con, you know, uh, speak with one another. But when I look at this, I feel that, um, you know, I think January 26th we might be how, or January 30th. You're right. That's right. January too. 30th. Okay, maybe. Depends. It all depends. Well, if we if we take if Hank doesn't manifest, yeah, but it's, right. it's for the we, sake we, of everybody we, else. We, we, we don't know when like TLA okay, so I, is Mehana Kihoi still here? Uh, I don't think yeah, so. No. Oh. I'm sorry. Can't, there you are, uh, Miss Kihoi. You're the one who's going to go after them. So you may have to get your witnesses ready to go on the 31st. Okay. Okay. It's just in case. I, we're going to get a better feel as we continue day to day. I apologize for this uncertainty. Okay. It's the nature of kind of a hearing like this. I would, um, I would just have three, I think, um, since 
I would be presenting Havane mm -hmm. and Ruth the mm -hmm. same time as Kahea or whoever will be presenting them. Um, and so when it comes to my well, turn. You know, I don't have Havani Rios on our, is that being offered by the Case Ohana? Case Flores Ohana? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you would be presenting, yeah. So you would be presenting the two together, Alawa together, and then your only other witness would be Ms. Slightholm, I think. Ms. Slightholm, uh, Sarah Kihoy, and myself. Okay. So those three witnesses, I think I'd like to give you a date certain. I'm not sure about Ms. Slightholm's situation, but I can understand if she needs some date certain. Oh, yeah. And then we, I actually spoke to her today. She is hopefully going to be available to appear. And she did ask me to make the request if she can present her witnesses last, if there would be a possibility. Um, let's think about that because she'll be testifying in your case, mm -hmm. and w so therefore she'll be here. Yeah. And if she can tell us what her thinking is and if there's a good reason for it, then everyone here can contribute and decide together. Okay, okay. Okay, because everyone's impacted, mm -hmm. but you're next. Okay. So please be sure to be ready on the 31st of January. Now, it looks to me like we need Ms. Aluli, I'm going to ask you, and I'll ask councils based on their experiences, and everyone else, of course. Is four more days in February enough? Six? Eight? What, what should I be looking for? Yeah, Joel. Well, we have to look after the 10th of February. Of if February? Ever, okay. Yes. So, you know, my question, Your Honor, is the guys that I know Ms. Uh, Wilma Holy um, is going to uh, present herself. She's going last. And what I'm not sure of are I know that there are designations made by Mr. Kamara, for example. Yes. So I think um, that's the unknown for me. I'm familiar with what I call the regulars and um, my expectation is that they will, if I were to just count them, then I'll go look at, I would just consider that. I could well, th this is my thinking because people have come and gone from the hearing. That's their choice. It's fine. I mean, I haven't made any issue of it. They know what order they're in. We follow the same order for more than half a year. So he knows what order he's in. At some point, I'm going to be asking him to be ready to go, and I need a confirmation from him that that's going to be the case. He'll need to be present on the record to do that, and so maybe what I will do is pick a date next week, perhaps next week Thursday, where everybody who's going to present witnesses needs to be here to tell us when they're going to go, because otherwise, I think you folks will be pretty close to done so our estimate for you folks will be much more easy to predict than we know Ms. Kihoi's schedule is the 31st. So on Thursday, my expectation is we would know at least a couple weeks in advance what the lineup is going to be and then we can, then everybody can plan and schedule, prepare, and I can already go ahead and go get four days, eight days in February. Uh, January 26th as being a deadline? Um, essentially saying that everybody who intends to put on witnesses had better be here on the 26th. Lock and load. Because I need to set up the schedule. But I'm going to, what do you think, eight days safely? Uh, well, I. We have emails for everybody. We can send out an email. No, I just need to know what, how many days I have to get in February, and then we're done. Okay. Okay, well, we would have to confer because we don't. We, I need to talk to them about we don't know. Because we're done, but everybody else, we can't for them. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I got it. You haven't checked. Yeah, but I would say you can count on us being pow at a certain time. See, I have checked. Yeah. So I kind of know how many witnesses are out yeah. there if everybody shows up. 
So, Mr. Shinyang. Yeah, Your Honor, I, I think, you know, just to be safe, I think we are looking at eight days. Um, right. Last time I looked at the witnesses, I think after petitioner's witnesses, we still have about 28 to 30 witnesses, I think. That was my count. And so if you have eight times four a day, that's 32. So I, I think that's about right. Eight days? Yeah. What do you think, Mr. Minot? Yes, I would concur with that conclusion. Uh, although I, I do have one question. Is there a deadline for notifying the hotel uh, about when we need dates in February? So in other words, can we tell them next week, Thursday, for we sure? We don't tell them. I have to work through others and get a contract. That's why I have to do it now. So right. my intention is after this, I'm going to pick the days right now and lock them in. And they'll go and do the contract, and those are the days we're going to be having the hearing. Okay. And that's a month for everybody pretty much. I mean, right. I'm giving a month's notice for folks who haven't put on witnesses yet. Okay, so I think that timing is sufficient. Okay. Um, Ms. Freitas, you're okay? Anybody else need to say something about that? Ms. Aluli? Are we going to start on February 13th? We are. And we're going to spend Valentine's Day together. Okay. Only the Freitas's will be happy. So 13, 14, 15, 16. Um... You know, I'm, I'm so tempted to use the 20th, but I know it's a state holiday. I think perhaps it would be wise to look for the 21st. Yes, yeah, always, I, I'm happy to go Saturdays and Sundays, but I have to be realistic. So 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 27, 28. I'm thinking we're gonna be done before that, but I'll be able to update the schedule as we move forward. You'll have at least two weeks' notice when your witnesses are going to, to be have to be ready to go. Okay. Yes. So it starts from the 13th next Monday. 13, 14, 15, 16, 21, 22, 23, 27, 28. That's nine days. I do not believe we're going to use them all. Okay. All right, is there anything else for today? Otherwise, everybody, thank you very much, and we'll see you Monday morning at 9 o'clock. You're watching Naleo TV. Contested case hearing for the 30-meter telescope project, a proceeding for the State of Hawaii, DLNR, Board of Land and Natural Resources.